So we've moved on to part D of our rock launch from the surface of the moon problem. And this is our final part, thankfully. And it says, how far in the x direction did the rock travel? And once again, we are given these initial values, uh, ones that we have been given or have solved for, now including the time value that we solved for in part C, which is also highlighted here in the uh, diagram from the start of the launch up until the rock's 5 meter distance in the y direction. But now we have to focus on how far in the x direction the rock traveled. So whereas last time we solved for a time up from this point until this point, we are now focusing on the x direction distance all the way from the beginning until the rock hits the ground again. And so once again, we have to turn to our kinematic equations uh, rewritten from the previous two times, and we have to decide which one would be the best to use to solve for our distance value. And we can see that this first equation here does not have uh, a distance variable anywhere in it. Um, our distance variable being r and being present in both of the other kinematic equations. So we can rule this one out off the bat. But we actually can't go any further in deciding which equation we should use because if we're focusing on the x direction now rather than the y direction, we don't have an x direction initial velocity to use in either of these uh, equations, and neither do we have a final x direction velocity. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to solve for our x direction velocity. So if we can recall, the uh, very first time that we solved for the y direction initial velocity was when we evaluated how our initial velocity vector was split up into its components. And we can redraw that over here, our initial velocity broken up into its y direction velocity and in pink, our x direction velocity. Um, and what we need to do now is instead of focusing on the y direction, we need to focus on the x direction. And how we are going to do that is if we remember, one thing that we haven't focused on at all throughout this entire problem is our initial angle of launch of 30 degrees. And we can actually apply this to this vector here because where we have an initial angle of launch, we have the initial direction of our uh, velocity. So we can put this angle here of 30 degrees and say that this is an accurate value relative to the y direction and the x direction components. So this is just basic trigonometry. Uh, we know our initial y direction velocity, and we want to know our initial x direction velocity. So we know that tangent of an angle is equal to opposite over adjacent, and our opposite being y, our adjacent being x, and we can just fill these in. Tangent of 30 degrees is equal to our opposite, which was 4.025, and then divided by what we want to know, our initial x direction velocity. And of course, we would multiply by x on both sides and divide by tangent of 30 on both sides, and we would end up with our uh, velocity in the x direction would equal 4.025 divided by tangent of 30. 
So we just calculate that real quick and we get that our initial x direction velocity is equal to uh, 6.97 meters per second. So we have this uh, initial x direction velocity which we can now plug into either of these kinematic equations but we now don't know our uh, acceleration value in the x direction uh, because we knew in the y direction acceleration due to gravity is this is supposed to be a negative value but our acceleration due to gravity is a negative value acting making our rock slow down in the y direction but we've never been given any indication that our rock is accelerating or decelerating in the x direction at all. So if we assume that there's no air resistance or any wind or anything like that on the moon, then we can say that our acceleration in the x direction is zero meters per second squared which now if we look at our kinematic equations if we plug in zero to two times acceleration times distance in this second equation then we have zero for this value and then we have no change in velocity before or after so then this whole equation just becomes a big zero so we can rule out this second kinematic equation so now we're just going to bring down this big equation, which coincidentally we haven't used yet in any of the other parts. And we can hopefully use this one in terms of the x direction to solve for our x direction distance. So we have that the final distance in the x direction is equal to the initial distance in the x direction plus our initial velocity in the x direction, which we solved for here, uh, times time plus one half of acceleration times time squared. But we know that acceleration is equal to zero meters per second squared, so we can actually just automatically take this part out here. So now it's just an assessment of what variables we have left uh, we are solving for this variable, our final distance in the x-direction. Uh, we can say that our initial distance in the x-direction is zero if our y-direction distance starts from zero and goes to five meters. And we solved for our initial velocity. So we just need to figure out what our time value is going to be. And we actually have a time value already it's just not an accurate time value based on the uh, trajectory we're looking for because uh, this time value of 2.48 seconds is the time value that it takes to get from the bottom of the launch to the top of the launch but we can see that if this time is from the bottom to the top we can also say that the time is accurate from the top to the bottom, back to the bottom of the launch. So the time of 2.48 seconds to get from 0 meters to 5 meters in the y direction is the same time it takes to get from 5 meters in the y direction to 0 meters. So this is also 2.48 seconds. So all we need to do is add these two times together and we get the time that it takes to take the entire uh, trajectory in the x direction. So we have this value, we have this value, and we have zero for this value, so now we just need to solve for our final distance. So again we just start plugging in our values. Uh, oh, we don't know if that's zero. Uh, we have our final x direction distance is equal to zero plus, and then we had 
meters per second times our time of 2.48 plus 2.48 or just 2 times 2.48 seconds. And just one more time, this is just a matter of calculating uh, and we get that our final x direction distance that our rock traveled is equal to 34.58 meters. So throughout this entire problem, we have used all three of those kinematic equations to solve for different things, and we can see how they're interrelated, and we can apply them to uh, the separate components of our analysis if we need to. And with that, we have finished our rock launched from the surface of the moon problem.